This is the brand new SSL Series Dynamics module. It's a hyper-aggressive, real-world compressor that has loads of character designed by one of the foremost audio manufacturers on the planet. And it's better than your plugins. This is the mix I got with the hardware. And this is the mix I got using software emulations. Let's take a look at why you should think about adding some hardware. Now, for all you guys out there who might not understand what a compressor is for, I know I didn't when I was starting up. They're kind of intimidating at first glance because they've got all these weird controls on them. They have no idea what the hell they mean. That's because the first compressors were designed by broadcast engineers whose main concern was making sure that crazy DJs wouldn't blow up a very expensive radio antenna by putting too much signal into it. Simply put, a compressor turns down the loud bits. Let me show you what I mean. So this is a typical vocal mic. I use this all the time. And we've got nothing going in right now. So what happens if I get really quiet and don't talk very loud and then talk really loud? You see, we get all kinds of peaks. We get clipping and it's just kind of nasty and not very pleasant to listen to at all. What a compressor allows us to do is get those loud bits under control. And then I can yell like an absolute lunatic and not have to worry about things peeking out. What this allows us to do is to turn the overall vocal level up just a little bit more because we've now got room to do that. Simply put, a compressor is an extremely fast automatic volume fader. Threshold means how loud a signal has to be before it's turned down. Attack is how fast it's turned down and release is how fast it's put back to its zero point. Ratio means how many decibels something is allowed to cross the threshold. So a two to one ratio means for every two dBs that the signal goes past the threshold, it will only be allowed to be turned up by one. Four to one means every four dBs, it only goes up by one. 10 to one means it'll have to do 10 decibels past the threshold to go up by one decibel. This is an aggressive style compression known as limiting. I've got a detailed video explaining how compression works and I'll have a link to that at the end of this one. If you're new to all of this, I'd highly recommend watching it. Now compression allows us to work in creative ways to not only smooth out loud and soft parts, but in aggressive ways that add saturation and character. And the great thing about compression is there are various styles all with their own signature sound. There's the very famous FET compressors, and then there's the tube opto compressors, which have a slower attack, and then there's the VCA style compressor, like you'll find what's on an SSL console. All of these have their own sound and can really shine on various sources. But what's all this mean? If you've already got plugins, why bother with the hardware? Number one, it's the real thing. If you put on a record, there's a very good chance that it was mixed on an SSL console. They are the sound of records. Even today, with all of this incredible digital technology, most of the top level mixing engineers are still working on a full-sized analog console. And there's a damn good chance they're working on an SSL. Why? Because they've got the sound. There's a certain aggressiveness that the hardware gives you that the software, even though it's getting better day by day, it still can't quite pull off. Let me show you what I mean. What we got here is the brand new B-Series Dynamics modules from SSL. It's like they took the famous bus compressor and split it apart into two mono channels and then put all these cool stepped controls on it, on the ratio and release controls on the compressor. And then there's a gate on it as well. Who would have thought an SSL bus compressor with a gate? Anyway, here it is. Uh, it's mono channels, but you can link them as stereo. Very cool piece of gear. So why hardware though? Why not just stick with the software? Let me show you exactly what. I've got a kick drum dialed in right now with the SSL native channel strip too, which is a phenomenal plugin. If you've got this, uh, you're gonna do absolutely fine. But the hardware just gives me something a little bit more aggressive and I can get it super quick. Let me show you what I mean. So that's on kick drum right now. Swap over the hardware. Dial in a little bit of compression. Go back to software. Like what happened to the kick? It just gets aggressive that much more quickly. That's it. Turn a knob, you're good to go. 
it's the exact same story going on with the snare drum. And for kick and snare, I absolutely love these B-series modules here because, man, they've just got the spank. Let me show you what I mean. So there's our software snare. Over to hardware. Yeah, what happened to the snare? Again, super easy to get awesome results with minimal screwing around. This is a great way how to experience mixing. Now, one of the things I love about doing YouTube, especially by myself and I don't have a crew here, is I can think I got something done and then it's like, oh crap, I forgot to get this part. One thing I wanted to bring up because I think this is critical and I think this is one of the really great parts about this is just how good the gate is on the B-Series Dynamics. Check this out. I've got a snare track I'm working on. There's quite a bit of cymbal bleed into the mics because I got a lot of EQ. We just turn in the range knob here. Listen to this. And it's just like, we got a little bit of that spittiness going on, but check it out. In a mix. That's super cool, because in my opinion, that's what gets you some of that SSL console sound without the big console price tag. Number two. Faster results. Now this is a big one for me. It just gets me to my goal faster. Let me ask you this. How many times have you gone into a mix and pull up your plugin list only to have to sort through what compressor you'd like to apply on the snare and then you're gonna try a bunch of different ones because you've got so many and you want the best results. And then once you finally pick it, you've gotta dial it in and the next thing you know, you spent a half an hour on it and you haven't even touched the rest of the mix. Working with hardware forces you into a different mindset and suddenly you're experiencing mixing in a different way. Knobs and switches give you immediate feedback. They don't have that mix by wire effect that you get with mixing with a mouse. And then what's really great about all this is if you close your eyes, you can turn a knob and you can hear the results without the visual aspect clouding your judgment. Because the truth is we all mix with our eyes. When we're working with a little 500 series unit like this, it's much more difficult to make decisions based on what we're seeing. Mixing becomes what it was meant to be, a series of decisions made based on what we're hearing. These knobs have tactile feedback. There's switches on the ratio and release knobs. You can feel when the change is being made, but might not necessarily know what the value is. And that's a good thing. The switches are also great for doing stereo pairs, sound drum overheads or rooms. And if you've got a compatible 500 series rack, you can hit the stereo link button and this will lock in for a perfect stereo pair so you can get back to using your ears instead of matching these things up perfectly. Number three. Set and forget. The thing I love about hardware is once you've got it dialed in for your favorite source, you can just leave it alone and there's a good chance it will work on the same type of source on your next project. One unit becomes your kick compressor, the next is for your snares, and you use this the same way on every project. If it sounds good, it is good. There's no need to screw around. Now you might have to make a few minor adjustments, but you'll be in the ballpark for what you want for a particular sound right from the second you hit play, and then you can get it dialed in immediately for whatever you're working on. You can then get back to more pressing matters like fixing the horribly out of tune vocals and figuring out a way how to get the bass player to stop drooling all over himself. Number four, no upgrades, no license. The biggest advantage of hardware over software, you own it. There's no upgrades, no licenses, no bullshit. It just works every time. There's no more freaking out wondering where the hell your eye lock disappeared to when you've got a band in the studio in 20 minutes. You turn it on and it'll do the thing. And if the company goes under, who cares? You've got the hardware and it works. It's like the ultimate insurance policy. Number five, a different and unique sound. You can do some really wonderful stuff with plugins. The only problem is they're digital, meaning each one you put in a channel, it's gonna sound exactly the same as the last one. And there's one cool thing about hardware. It has manufacturing tolerances. There's no exact copy. Every channel is slightly different from the last, which will give your mixes some much needed character. Now, I'm not saying to go get rid of your plugins. What I'm saying is this will expand your mixes. At 699 bucks for the B-Dynamics, it's a really affordable price for some awesome hardware that's not a copy of an older design or trying to pretend to be something that it's not. We don't have to look very hard to find those products. Still not convinced? Let's listen to a full mix, one using the excellent SSL plugins and the other using the new B-Series Dynamics on kick, snare, overheads, and bass. You tell me what sounds better.
let's be clear, this is real SSL hardware and at a price that's not out of reach for the most of us. Even one channel is gonna be super useful in your home studio, not just for the kick and snare, but for vocals and even for voiceover. After all, I've been using one this entire time on my main voiceover mic. You hear any brittleness? Any sibilance? No, that's because it's got a built-in de so it'll clamp down on any vocal harshness before it becomes a problem. Now this compressor would be perfect for podcasting or any type of content creation where voiceover is needed. My only problem with this compressor, I don't have eight of them. Now, if you're new to all this and you do need some help understanding compression, please check out my video, How to Use a Compressor, where I break it down in a way that's very simple to understand, especially for all you beginners out there. Check it out here.